It's a magical place. It is. You missed the spot. Damn it. I thought you checked it. <laughs> and welcome back to another Linux Themecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux theming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Old Man Vin. Bye. Gotta go to bed early because somebody messed up at work and you gotta work on Sunday, Jordan. And back from the dead, not dead, not at all. From the back refurbishment. From uh, back from Tahiti. It's a magical place. It is. You missed the spot. Damn it. I thought you checked it. <laughs> I just I just peeled all like you the, just the clear off plastic on shit. off of it the, shows up uh, on the dock off, and you're off, just off like, that's yeah, good, whatever. I'm mean, probably getting ripped off like crazy. I anyway. mean, I mean if, if you want, you can check in the butthole. There's probably something there too. Together with you, Shot Realm Dynamic. Help us form. Two canes, cocaine Voltron. Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? What's new? I've been um going down a rabbit hole that I never thought I'd be going down. Never. Like, never really occurred to me. Because when, when you think about uh, AMD Epic CPUs, you're like, yeah, that's neat. And Server like, grade, yeah. Yeah, you just continue on about your day. You're like, yeah, that's cool, whatever. <laughs> Have fun with that. Uh, the more I've been looking into it, like, financially, what makes the most sense? AMD Thread River Rose are just overpriced. They're overpriced for what I need, for what we need. They, they just are. We're talking $800 motherboards. $1,200 CPUs and uh, Threadripper is no longer a thing. Just regular, ordinary, semi-affordable Threadripper. And just out of curiosity, I was like, hey, you know what? I don't need like this big whiz bang motherboard. So that's how this process started. I'm like, super micro, do you make a Threadripper Pro motherboard? They're like, yes, we do, Vin. I'm like, is it green? No. I'm like, well, I'm a little disappointed, but it was only like $800 instead of, um. but I would still be screwed with that. So since I was at super micro's uh, web zone, I'm like, how much? Okay. Do they make like an EATX, just regular Epic motherboard that you could stick and put in it? Yeah, they do. And it's green. And it's like $500. Right. Nice. Okay. All right. That's right? much better. Right. You start <laughs> looking what's, at that. What's the butt though? Hang on. Okay. <laughs> the butt for, for the home users are things that would probably bother most people because it doesn't have like things like Wi-Fi on it. It's not included. It doesn't have onboard audio on it. Clutch pearls. Um... No, oh, no. And you have like four USB ports. No, yeah, all, all right, all right. Yeah, I, I, I can see why that's the less USB than ports desirable. would bother me. If the, the other two, not so much. Okay, four, <laughs> but you do have the USB three header, so you can get all the ones on your yes. phone. <laughs> Audio, I, I just named off a list of stuff on this Threadripper that I disabled. I'm like, yes, I don't want that. I don't want that. Don't want that. Don't cut all that on. No. So, so th this this is your perfect motherboard, pretty much. And it's green. And it's. Green. And it's also significantly cheaper than the Threadripper Pro. Now, Thank you. Yeah. Th this is where shit gets interesting. Apparently on the server side, and instead of having like the Threadripper 1, and it, well, we got two generations out of that. Then we had the new Threadripper generation where NVIDIA, not NVIDIA, but AMD came out and they said, hey guys, we got to change the socket, but don't worry, this is good going forward. By the way, you're only getting one generation. We're killing that line. Mm. Hi, we're at AMD. Unlike that, Jordan, uh, they, there's a Threadripper 7001, 7002, 7003 generations all still work on the original boards. Okay. Up to and including PCI 4.0. Hmm. And it's not a niche product. Go on eBay. You're like, okay, I, I want a 24-core uh, Gen 2 Threadripper CPU. Uh, what's that going to cost? About 400 bucks? Wow, that's, that's that's significantly cheaper than twenty three hundred dollars. Yeah, mm -hmm. you might you might be able to get away with the system for under a thousand bucks. That's or at least for the CPU and motherboard. Yeah, just for those two. <laughs> and then I got to dig around and uh, find. Uh, I do need R dims instead of my mm. U dims. Which then again, this rabbit hole. I, I found out about this long term RAM manufacturer that's been around for like thirty years making, and they have lifetime warranty RAM, and it's reasonably cheap. Mm. And then you uh Is it green? Yes. Oh. No heat spreaders on it, dude. This is gonna be a hipster build. This is gonna be my hipster epic gaming PC that All I don't right. play games on. <laughs> so yeah, I, I've been doing that. I've been having a fun time. Um fun's the wrong word for it. Kind of I like learning new things. We'll put it like that. Also, AMD, go die in a fire with the naming schemes for your epic CPUs with the three generations. I mean you have fucking moon glyph numbers that would make Intel blush. Like, <laughs> would, would, would you make would it make an acer monitor blush no 
Okay. Not, yeah, not, no, not Mutter, that Muddle names are something else. <sighs> Holy hell. Acer just, there's no, Acer is the alpha and omega when it comes to ZQL1319. Yeah, no, I mean, they, they, they use the Greek alphabet for their fucking model Dude. names, right? Like, yeah. Like, did you have a see? It genuinely looks like somebody had a seizure and smashed their head on a keyboard for a good solid 30 it's seconds it's great it's great and when i when i, when I got uh, th- this this other monitor this other acer panel i'm like yeah. oh what's this one called it's like oh it's instead of why <laughs> so it's like oh amazing great brilliant it's okay for that love it cthulhu we had a good time on uh thursday we got some people yep. starting to show up we're doing back for bread jordan and myself uh, we're trying to work our way through that in co-op why well, i mean we got to play it with proton but hey Turtle Rock was good enough to make sure easy anti-cheat works under Linux. They had to go out of their way to do that, and they did. So, hey, we're mm-hmm. going to do them that. If you missed out, you missed your chance to play through Left 4 Dead with us, which we did years and years ago, which took us a couple of years to get done. We're doing it again with this every Thursday. It takes place at 7.30. I want to thank Rohit joined us in Beastvik, who joined us, who gave us a very unintentional comedic bit about 30 minutes into the game and we we were definitely it's good next week's a good time to tune in or participate if you want if you're a twitch sub or a patron yeah subscribe to the event in discord Same yeah stuff let us know that you're coming and you can get your voice on we don't need your idea subscribe. or whatever subscribe you click to the other on the thing. thing like and subscribe ring Sub- bells and like shit. subscribe to linux gamecast click on the YouTube. thing that will say you'll be there yes <laughs> tiktok.com slash pedro mateus TikTok, your body rock now <laughs> what happened is uh we're like 30 minutes into just getting squad wipe we're 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 at a tough spot and uh no strangers to this and i finally i just turned around and i, I was watching uh our, our friend beeswick who plays track mania with us constantly we're not strangers and just like are, are you playing with a controller silence it was that group the other three people turning around like what it's like oh, okay yeah <laughs> But uh, yeah, you to know, his you know credit, what? to his credit, he wouldn't yeah, get the kitty board mouse, which was yeah. nice. That was polite. Uh, look forward to that. And uh, yeah, come play with us on Tuesdays and Fridays if you want. We do Trek Mania, it's the thing we call you can it. Play uh, that with a controller, recommended. You can play that, it's the best racing game. It requires two buttons to play. Go and stop. It's a physics platformer with wheels. We have our own custom server, we have our get togethers on Tuesdays. Where we hang out with 14 fresh tracks got 20 you know a couple of days to practice that on friday we play for points just to have fun it's a good excuse to get together and just talk some smack great people great times now pedro you're back do you have that new pedro sent uh yeah, it's pedro much like small. the old one from what my nose can pick up which is none at all I guess I'm used to it by now. The, no, uh, it was uh, a good two weeks in Portugal. Uh, very, very proud of my little brother. Uh, he's uh, managed to find a job in Portugal, which, uh, yeah, don't, don't you, squander doing that, what? seriously. <laughs> Go ahead. Do, doing what? Oh, uh, he's, um, he's a doorman at a um, very fancy resort at, near uh, one of the uh, beach places. Very fancy resort. Uh, does he have the? Does he have like the bellboy uniform? Does he have, like the, yes. the red velvet with the cap. Oh, <laughs> and man. since he is a a bit of a large boy, uh, those are very um, form fitting, as it were. <laughs> but yeah, he does have the uniform. Uh, and yeah, no, seriously, do Mateus. not squander that. Uh, very good. That's better than I did. <laughs> now, the only thing people give a singular fuck about: how did your deck perform on your holiday? Ah, yes. So you may remember the whole uh, Valve fix the offline mode and wasn't working properly. It it still needs work because unless you manually set the deck to offline mode while you're still connected to the internet, uh, it attempts to connect every time you launch a game. It, it spends 30 seconds attempting to connect to the internet, despite knowing full well that it won't be able to, but it keeps trying. So every game you launch is delayed by 30 seconds. That needs fixing Valve. Seriously. Well, it's, it's a better kids. love story no than patience. like a, a, a Windows laptop tied to a domain trying to find that domain controller. That's always it, fun. just not letting you log in. It's like no, can't find a domain, can't log in. Well, I could use the laptop then. I mean, yeah. or you could just stop taking private subs. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> nah it, why? Why would you go on those public submarines, man? You gotta get your own. He doesn't want to mingle with those peasants on our public subs. Yeah, on the public submarines. <laughs> Two I, or three I, I subs. Mean, <laughs> I mean, it's 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 a good place if you want to hang out with the horse. Oh, um, have you been doing anything, Jordan? 
Me? No, I've been fucking stressing myself out and starving. I got, I got nothing to do but complain, and y'all don't want to hear that shit. All right. <laughs> yeah, so, horse, submarines, it's the Steve! Update! And no, that wasn't an audio cock-up. That was my voice that failed there. Uh, Steam Climb Beta, September 13th, <laughs> yeah. uh, has been updated with the following changes. In-game purchases for Mac and Linux will now use updated purchase approval dialogue. Finally, a third and 19th class Mac and Linux users can have it, whatever the hell that is. I genuinely have no idea, but better Vulcan performance for game capture. So if you are unfortunate enough to experiment with Steam Remote Play and go, oh man, this is horrible. It's going to be slightly less horrible. And there's some things about uh, Steam input, Jordan. Yeah, <laughs> apparently some Windows users need third-party <laughs> software to use the DualShock 4 on their computers. <laughs> yeah, why have support wow. for direct input in the operating system when you are the company that created X input? Thanks, Microsoft. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the the uh, purchase approval dialogue. I don't I don't know how much that affects us. Like, I guess there are some Linux gamers who do buy in-game like items. I guess, I guess I don't I don't I don't I don't think any of us do, how do you but even buy, okay how does that work and yes I'm completely ignorant to this 100 percent like w- would you have like money in your steam wallet then you'd buy something in a game yeah yeah, yes, or, 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 or you could uh, or go through the uh, the regular uh like uh checkout process that's overlay what I was for. yeah 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 uh, it, it usually uses number. the overlay if you have uh, steam credits you could just use whatever is in your wallet if yep. not it goes through the regular uh, process to Why, pick your card wait a minute what if it's a 2k game <laughs> well, well the, that well, might require you, its own launcher <laughs> well you see we, we we've removed all the in-game purchases into its own launcher that crashes whenever you you yes. launch it so that you can work yeah you can't even stuff. launch them on linux anymore so yeah can't do it Mm. <laughs> not a problem <laughs> i'm still waiting for the first game that um is on steam and you try to click it and it tries to launch epic oh yeah well, so you know I, that's gonna happen at some point somebody's well, gonna try it. um um fall guys uh already requires you to sign into the epic online services so i, I mean now, this wolfenstein is, youngblood makes you sign into bethesda net so it's not the well, first time that, it's like the whole thing this is, uh, would just be entertaining but it's not out of their own possibility not by a long shot every time you see the origin launcher that you have to launch oh, from boy. steam like this is a ah, thing yeah, that does yeah. happen right? <laughs> like why is this taking oh lovely. Why, why why is nothing working oh origin changed where my window is great mm-hmm. that's useful thank you hey we got some good news though uh valve is no longer slow when you're trying to, in all fairness, uh, try to pull up a web page on the Steam store with a like display and maybe a little more than normal. Let's say I don't know twenty thousand games at one time. Yeah, yeah, maybe you might want to try to do that. Expo, you might know him from Steam DB. Kind of walked out, spitting some hot fire, saying since Valve refuses to fix performance on the all games page on the Steam community profiles, I did it for them. All I did was hook the row building an end to a fragment temporary element and not append the sub menu. Let's see, how does it work? It's still slow because, and I quote, their code is horrendous, but for a page with 2,100 games, it goes from 16 seconds to 1.6. And apparently somebody tried it on a page with 20,000 games and it went from over seven minutes to 10 That's seconds. Yeah. Exponential. <laughs> Listen, Valve is a video game company, not a website design company. They know nothing about writing efficient code for constrained systems at all, but Pavel does. So, well, you know, I'm going to say in Valve's defense, I don't think having to pull up a page with 20,000 games qualifies as a typical use case. <laughs> no, but but still, like, uh, even for like 2,100 games, which is like. A decent Perfectly amount. Perfectly sure. attainable if you yeah. buy into the bundles. Yeah. 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 Um, but go, going from 16 seconds down to one, that's that's a substantial performance improvement. So, mm-hmm. yeah. You, uh, what's what's the name of the extension you need to install to get this? Uh, Did he make an extension already? It. Uh, he uh, said yeah, so. Out for yeah. Fire, or for uh, Firefox, Chrome, and Edge. Okay. okay. <laughs> what about <Yeah>. Ladybird? <laughs> Which no, engine no. does that use? Its own. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's br- uh, brand, brand new from scratch. <laughs> it's going to take a minute. So uh, I was just playing around, reading around on the internet earlier this week. And I don't know, like you, like the second you give me the ability to enable dark mode on anything, it's getting a dark mode. 
you know, Chrome, dark mode, Firefox, dark mode, Google Docs, go fuck yourself, Google, give me a dark mode. <laughs> you did on mobile, so only fuck yourself a little bit, but give me that on desktop, please. I wanted that on Steam, and I, I understand. You're like, well, isn't that kind of already in dark mode, Vin? Not dark enough for my punk <laughs> could be It could be darker, yeah. yeah. Like, get darker, man. And uh, None more black. Then I'm remem- remembering, like, doesn't Steam have themes? So, you know, I'm a little Billy with my tongue hanging out, like, Steam themes. And I ran across one that I really liked, and I wanted to share it because some work has clearly went into it. And what is it even called? <laughs> Ultimate me- dark mode me- skin for Steam. Yes, Jordan? I was, it's based, oh, never mind, never mind. It was Thank based you. off of Metro for Steam. But yeah. And uh, this takes a little bit of work to get up and running, but I think it looks the business, you know, and it's got purple and red highlights. Everything I look for in a Steam Engine, I mean, it redoes the top. Like it, re- it even redoes the uh, Steam launch. Like when you go to launch Steam, that has a different logo on it. And there it is. It's got purple in it. Okay. Ooh. I'm not doing a great job. It looks very much like the old uh, Metro for Steam uh, theme. I used that one for the longest time. <laughs> it's, it's it's like I said, it's uh, based off of it. Uh, they, yeah. it's, it's actually like a hodgepodge of like five or six different themes with some custom work on top of it. Mm-hmm. But it looks good. I think it looks good. Uh, I've been using it this week. I haven't run any problems. Now there is a problem with like the Linux version that it, it's unable to theme the... Um, buddy list because of the way valve has something set up on the buddy list but you do need to set it up with sfp because i didn't know what an sfp was but there's information all this is going to be in our show notes if you're curious about it and uh that will like do all the patching for you and there's a linux actually there's Steam a linux friends link. patch yeah <laughs> has a gui client for linux of all things you know, like oh look at that aren't we fancy click the button and it just changes and you can have like a super goth mode for steam and it's all like purple and shit i i'm happy with it i haven't run into any gotchas and i think it looks clean and slick and you know what i was thinking about just like not hanging with it i was like that was a cool experience then i saw that strider it pissed him off for some reason i'm like sticking with me buddy (laughs) we're going down (laughs) me and you um new version of proton ge yeah, or GE Proton, as they want it to be called now, because they don't want Proton to be in the front. Uh, but yeah, uh, so uh turns out Eggy was a little under-caffeinated, and the 732 build uh, is kind of missing the Proton patches. So uh, 733 gets released, and it has all that stuff. Uh, it pulls in the latest wine, Dix Vix, VKD3D. Uh, this time, it actually does have the Proton patches. Um, appara- apparently, uh, Fall Guys has a fix as well. I got to try that out. Every every so often, I need to like log into that game and see if it crashes after five minutes. But another cool another game I really do like got a fix in here. Um, Divinity Sin Original 2 no longer needs its Proton fix, which is pretty dope. But uh, you do need to uh, delete some old stuff that uh, Proton fix did if you want to use it going forward. So yeah, go go play Divinity Original Sin too. It's dope. You can be an angry skeleton who shoots fireballs. Yeah, and it is a fairly small update considering the previous rounds of updates of the twenty series, which came with all of the FSR patches and the custom resolutions and everything else. So this one is just positively refreshing. You know, it's a teeny tiny thing. But he then forgot <laughs> the um, the uh, GE patches and the DXVK async and everything else. It's like, oops. Okay, <laughs> new version it yeah. is. I downloaded yeah, it 732 at yeah, first. I don't have anything it's I like, can say. That's things that work. <laughs> how many times has uh, Valve pushed out Proton with debugging enabled? I mean, right. Like, yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I, I mean, that, that, that's that's kind of like the the one reason I don't look at something like Nobara as a, as a disrupt option, just because like if Eggy has a bad day, shit can go sideways, and I don't want to have to unfuck my operating system because some guy forgot his coffee. <laughs> don't run Although, updates uh, that often on Nobara. <laughs> hey, Jordan, you just be quiet. Pedro has a long, um, successful track record of running distributions made by one person. Yeah, I, I, I look made forward to the funeral. Person. Uh, the, I, I don't meet that requirement. <laughs> I mean, that was a joke, but if I have to explain it, it's not going to be very <laughs> I, I mean, it could yeah. have just not been a good joke. I don't know. We got new games, though. Um, Azonzo. Um, it's from the, uh, from the people who brought you Verdun and Tannenberg World War one simulation. It's good stuff. Um, yeah, uh, it is, uh, 10% off right now. 
Uh, and yeah, the, uh, this this is a this is based on the uh, series of battles that happened uh, between the Austro-Hungarian Empire and uh, Italy during World War One, taking place in the uh, Valley of Isonzo. The name, no, kind of there. Uh, and the, again, because it's the the Verdun people, they're like completely fucking insane about trying to get all of the details right down to like the terrain. So they sent people out there to like Isonzo and the sites of the valleys to interview people get uh get like photo references for like materials and yeah for for right now it seems like it's getting a fairly positive review um although we, we i don't know i i didn't really like verdun and tannenberg it's a very particular style of shooter it's highly simulationist oh, i know some ever? people you are just didn't have enough memory to run that monster <laughs> shut up um but yeah. Why is this game using uh, 14 gigs of RAM? <laughs> hey, you know what? This is not going to be cheap. It's currently 10% off regularly, $29.99, $26.99 right now, 10% off. And, you know, unlike, uh, I'm not going to say unlike, but more so than games like Verdun, this one's got a little hype around it. You know, I've seen some streamers, like, at least talk about it, if not playing it. And they gave it a mention to which I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I remember seeing that. So I went back and added it because there's apparently very, like, marketable niche for world war one shooters mm -hmm. that is clearly a thing but most importantly with this unlike we're done unlike <laughs> we're done this this has just got a beat gentlemen it does why facial yes. hair dlc baby mustaches <laughs> Mustache and the beard. ultimate pay to win the mustache is too powerful if you if you, if you get it you just headshot everyone <laughs> I mean, See, I'm right. actually looking at the developer video. This is something that we usually don't do, but uh, the live broadcasting that they're doing right now, there's an interview with uh, Sabaton, and they showed parts of the video clip pertaining to the story around the Isonzo bit. So, um, okay, you have my attention. <laughs> Is, is, is Sabaton doing the soundtrack for this game? That would be dope as hell, man. I don't know, but the, they, they they were showing the video clip, and um, yeah, they, they have just straight up the, the, dude the, with the, the long the, hair from Sabaton yep, on the two, interview. All right. two, two of the musicians. No no Joachim, though, so we're not going to get some Steel yeah. Commander shit. <laughs> so uh, maybe you're like me, and you just get tired of trying to run Cyberpunk. And you're like, you know what? Maybe in five years from now, you know what? Here's some interesting, uh, good on CD Projekt Red. They're going to be releasing the like modding and dev tools that they use to the community mm -hmm. to play around. So soon you'll be able to play Cyberpunk made entirely out of nothing, but like giant 14 inch purple floppy dildos. Looking forward to it. However, in the meantime, maybe you want to play a uh, third person shooty pew pew punk. Yes. And something that will probably run on your more modest hardware. Or, you, you know, even your high-end hardware that doesn't run it very well because it's a Pascal video card. Shut yeah. up, Pedro. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I, I I'd slash you with my machete, but I'm not allowed to use it anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, I too was in that boat till not too long ago, but uh, Cyber Poly, that is an open world third person shooter and RPG it remains to be seen what the RPG bits actually are because it's not out yet and it will be coming out in early access in late 2022. Uh, I don't actually hate the low poly aesthetic i don't i, I uh, i'm very much in the uh, boomer shooter camp i like the old styly um first person and third person shooters so yeah it, it, it will probably run better i, uh, I, look I looked at this to. game <laughs> yeah I, I looked at this game and i'm like ah someone remade the playstation 4 version of cyberpunk and yeah <laughs> if you if you read the uh, description of it it is very much like cyberpunk with the serial numbers filed off you're in dark city instead of night city and i bet Kiefer sutherland's gonna show up midway through the game and try to sue the people making it like i was in that movie damn it um i took a I look at it and you know what <sighs> To agree with Pedro, like you can do the poly look right, and this isn't like flat, super flat shaded. I mean, this has got some style to it. They've done a little bit of work to it. And I'm like, all right, I, I can deal with the aesthetic. I don't have any complaints. But again, if you do it right, but you really got to sell it on the open world RPG mechanics because all that trailer looks like is a third person zoomer shooter. I mean, it looks like Fortnite with just running around shooting. That's all they show in the trailer. And I'm like, man, there's a billion of these games. You got to step out. You got to differentiate yourself from all the other zoomer shooters out there. Because I don't want to play Fortnite, but with more. Yeah, show me the driving. Show me the quests. Show right. me what the character progression looks like. 
that's what you're going up against. So you show me. <laughs> so we we act, I think we uh, we played a uh, we played a game by these guys before. Uh, this is from the makers of Rejoinder. So Green Frog oh. was familiar. That yeah yeah. <laughs> what was Rejoinder? Yeah. Rejoinder uh, was like was uh, that, um, yeah. Arena. It was, mm, go on. It was the arena roguelike type of situation where uh, you had your character that started Wait with a, a weapon one, and you were stuck yeah, with it. This, yes. this guy. <laughs> wow, that just uh, no offense, man, but my expectations just didn't go up um <laughs> I, yeah I, Look, I mean the, this, this is take two so <laughs> cyber maybe. poly looks a lot better than rejoinder it looks. does a lot <laughs> long as it's got some uh, uh again rpg mechanics because we don't need yet another zoomer shooter like that's been done to death uh unlike speeding up brand new top of the line games like csgo <laughs> yeah, well, uh, even older games like, you know, CSGO, uh, which well, apparently if you have an AMD video card and you're running uh, Mesa, the Mesa drivers, uh, you uh, probably, if you're trying to launch um, CSGO, you probably noticed that it was taking anywhere from 150 to 300 seconds for it to launch on the first go uh so that that was a bug there was a bug in uh gl uh, text sub image uh specifically gl depth stencil which was causing the delay so yeah the um, fine mesa folks uh specifically who was it that submitted a uh, pierre eric palou prayer uh was the That's one who sub- yeah submitted the uh original patch and uh Apparently, it's been merged, so we will probably be seeing some of that come with the um, newer versions of Mesa. So, yeah, significant. Um, yeah, <laughs> like over, over, over 90%, which is, yeah. you, 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 love, you love to see it, right? Like, CSGO is an old game, and I think there there is a tendency for a lot of these older titles to get forgotten in, in Mesa, just because, like, the focus is on, well, let's get the new hot shit out, even though, like, maybe some of the old shit people want to, want to actually play is uh, not working, so it's good to see that. Uh, I mean, unless you're Valve, addressed. and you're like, CSGO, and they're like, wait, what? Like, you made it. You're like, <laughs> we did? Huh. <laughs> well, right. T- T- Fortress CSGO, 2, what? TF2. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. I think some of those guys might... I, I don't know. Uh, no, this is always good to see. Uh, you know, Mesa's pretty slick. Yeah, I have... You know, I don't... I have an APU, which I have on the 5600G, and I guess that was a relatively painless experience, you know? And you just had to get on something modern, because it yep. does still, to this day, if you want the most out of it, and by that I mean you want it to work correctly, you need new shit. So. Yeah, you, oft, oftentimes, like the first thing you do is you uh, you add a copper or a PPA that just does like nightly get builds because yeah, that's that's what you want. You want the yeah. the new hotness, um, and hopefully but, this will mean not just improvements for uh, CS:GO itself because right now the the one game that people know that uses this GL depth stencil specifically like this was CS:GO. So hopefully this will actually help some other game that is far less known. Which would yeah. be nice. Not gonna <laughs> fix. You know, yep. Yeah. Be- better open GL on AMD. Like, and it's it's still lagging behind. It's it's a lot better yep. than where it was, but it's still not great. Neither is uh, neither is EVGA's relationship with Nvidia, which I guess we're gonna talk about a little bit next. Absolutely sexy. What? Uh, I guess you'll have to tune into the live show next week to find out. Uh, the news are coming, and we're not starting with drivers because, ironically enough, we kind of had, well, not ironically, but uh, inadequately enough, we had the drivers in the uh, previous segment. So I'm just going to shut up now and let Jordan tell you how you can uh, support us. <laughs> Make it rain. <laughs> yeah, spread that cash all over. Uh, head on over to the Patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Spread that Where cast you, at Linux Gamecast. Yeah. <laughs> OnlyFans.com slash Linux Gamecast. No, yeah, we don't have Nutella, an OnlyFans. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's not Nutella. It's poop. Uh, yeah, <laughs> subscribe to our Patreon. You get some cool stuff like access to our Discord channel, which will let you RSVP to game streams. As Ben mentioned at the very beginning of this show, uh, we do Trackmania on Tuesdays and Fridays and Back for Blood on Thursdays. 
Ah, uh, wrong finger, damn it. All right, anyways. <laughs> but yeah, if you want if you want to RSVP, get into Discord. You can also get to that by subbing to us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Linux game. Oh, shit, son. We got people to think from Twitch. Twitch just, uh, everybody yeah. remembered. They gave us their Bezo box. Maybe you don't even realize this. If you're like me, you got Amazon Prime and like, it's weird. We talk about that a lot. You're like, yeah, I got Amazon Prime for the shipping. Now we got the video thing, which is like yeah, for the boys. Yeah, free, free Twitch subs. Which, yeah. Yeah. Hey. Take money out of Uncle Bezos' pocket each and every he, month. He doesn't need it. No, no, he's good, man. Uh, but I want to thank Cheesy Bacon for the Twitch resub, PT Dave for the Twitch resub, Nubbin Twitch resub, and of course Mir for that, along with speaking Katana of, Still. Speaking of uh, Patreon, too, we also got to thank Oil of Hope for uh, increasing his Patreon pledge. Yes. So thanks thank a lot for <laughs> that, that, That was kind of fun. We were chilling out on Wednesday, and Oil of Hope was like, yo, what's the best way? Twitch, Patreon. I'm like, Patreon takes less of a cut, and... We get it's uh, patron doesn't understand um, like uh, knock currency, mm-hmm. so uh, it showed up as like twenty five dollars. I'm like, damn, um, that's a bit much. <laughs> He's like, no, 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 no. It's uh, I'm like, okay, okay, got it, got it, got it. But still, thank yep. you. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, but uh, other cool stuff uh, for getting in on Patreon, you get your name in the credits, uh, you get the video feed for uh, the pre pre superstars and other stuff. And when mm-hmm. Ben puts out interfacing Linux stuff, you get a first sneak peek. At oh, the shit. I'm working on something, man. I, I, bought, I bought something out of anger. Not only is it a USB audio interface, a lot of people have been asking me about this, and I got to thinking about it because Pedro and I were talking about the latest purple Apoogie. Mm. That's expensive. <laughs> it's three hundred dollars. It's nothing like uh, a poogie, but it's nice and purple. But a poogie's like, yo, we got like this onboard DSP. We got the EQs and compressors, and of course, somebody asked me, like, does that work with Linux? I'm like, of course it fucking doesn't. Why? Why would you even waste your time? So I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? Let me go find something with a nice GUI on it that has onboard DSP that you can use for live streaming. Has an EQ, has a compressor. I finally found it. I went to order it. And fucking Jim at Guitar Center fucked it up because I tried to fucking click buy and it's like, even though you got all the way to the end, you got your credit card information in, it, we can't sell it to you. You got to take it out of your cart. I'm like, ah. That's because you set up that listing with a controller. I, <laughs> motherfucker, I, like... It's b <laughs> Here's what I did. I went to the same, same company with a different name mm. called Music Go Round. It is literally owed... It's, they're back in you get the same pictures from these mother i mean it's the same company man and i bought it there okay so that that's coming in the mail next week look forward to that couple of other videos you get early cracks at a lot of stuff we do like wizards and shit if you want to be spoiled on the latest episode of game of who it's not even well it is I mean, game it's, of who, it's kind, it's kind yeah. of game of who yeah like matt smith's in it matt smith's um, in it then we get rings um, of powder yeah powdered powdered buttholes uh yeah so uh good stuff with patreon we got a store as well if you want something more tangible for your bucks store.linuxgamecast.com we got t-shirts we got uh stickers we got do we still got coffee cups i don't know yeah we do we got coffee cups you know coffee cup and shit <laughs> yeah I, got, I gotta i gotta check the store listing before i actually start reading these things off but we got we got uh die cut stickers all Look good stuff Look at that. yep wait uh, I gotta be very careful. I don't want to knock over a monitor, man. <laughs> Please! <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I didn't knock over something doing that. Uh if you want if you wanna, I don't know, knock me up. We got wish lists. Uh LinuxGameCast.com, put your mouse over the support button, click click on uh the names. Pedro has one, Joe Why do has you one. Want a, what the hell is this keyword? <laughs> it's a, it's, it's a an Rocket RGB Vulcan keyword. 120. Get it's stuffed, uh, Pedro. He's got a knob on it. Yes, it has a knob, and it's still supported by the Rokat uh, tools, so there's that. Pedro, <laughs> why would you get a keyboard that has a knob on it? Do you want competition? <laughs> a, a, a knob off? I'm a massive knob. I want a smaller knob, okay? <laughs> oh, look, speaking of a poogie, Jesus Christ, that thing's yes. 500 pounds. <laughs> you know, 500 see, pounds for the Apogee Pedro, Duet 3. Pedro, at, at 300 pounds, that new Apuki single channel is practically giving it away. What does Jordan have? <laughs> Jordan desperately needs a chair because he broke a piece out of his chair and it squeaks, and Jordan's the type of person that's like, doesn't bother me, bro. Uh, yeah. Maybe there's some dice, there's some green shit, more green shit. There's the uh, R4 SDHC. <laughs> this boy loves his SSDs. Rechargeable replacement battery for Nintendo DS Lite. Oh, it was one of yours running a bit low. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I mean, I mean, my D, my DS Lite is like fucking fifteen years old. All right, it doesn't hold a charge anymore. Extra webcams, punching bags, uh, a Radeon sixty seven hundred, and you might have guessed if you were tuning to the beginning of the show. I desperately need green shit. I need green motherboards. <laughs> I need green registered RAM. 
not so hot yeah. on this because trying to find an Epic CPU on Amazon is kind of dodgy, but what I'm looking for is a 7402 or 7F32. Everything else is kind of extraneous because that's the big upgrade coming in. S- send him a bag of spinach. He needs all the green stuff. Some Brussels sprouts, kale, all that. Brussel kale. It's yeah, like it, hey, it, it's it, like Veggie Tales, but it's <laughs> Russell. Uh, so okay, so kale doesn't taste like anything, and Brussels sprouts is it tastes like butthole. Uh, so you don't like what? Brussels sprouts? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Have you tried v- it with v- some peas and some fish? <laughs> I don't want to die while tasting like shit. <laughs> do, do, you gotta get some tuna and pineapple. Yeah. On okay, it, check clearly. this out. I, I gotta I gotta work around Jordan. I want you to hold his nose. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> well, co- ki- kitchen nightmares aside, let's look at some uh, curvy video cards. Baby, oh, mm, some nice hot. Oh, uh, do, don't we need to thank Artharin because he gave uh, he gifted yes. me a game. Oh um, yeah, he gifted me Steel Rising. Thank you. <laughs> it's a very Frenchy revolution. Um, you play as a fucking marionette. Marionette. Yeah. It's like <laughs> click click click. I watch somebody play that. And I'm like, yeah, Pedro probably play that for. Like, Two, three hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually a uh, very good souls like. <laughs> and I, I mentioned was not having race. serious M4 on Wednesday. Uh, <laughs> then it just, for whatever reason that triggered her theory, he's like, you would have it now. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate the maliciousness of it. So there is. That. I, I mean, he's, he's getting through. He bought, he bought me my copy for when it released. So I guess Pedro's getting one next <gasps> or else. Knows. <laughs> now we got some not nudes, but you know the the some, some that curvy backsides put, you're, you're gonna yeah. put on your 4090 we got box art check it out ladies and gentlemen zotac 4090 amp extreme that's a curvy boy isn't it is, yeah, yeah no, see smells. that one uh on the, on the box thing. there it looks tiny and then you look at the actual things it's like oh that's about four slots wide isn't it Mm. Yeah, it's, it's mm. a bit of a chonker okay am i alone and everyone listening uh go check out the video version but if you're watching it live doesn't that make you want to like slice something with it like bread or for whatever fucking yeah, reason like you want to it, roll it, it on it something looks, it looks like a mandolin or yeah, yeah I, I can i can i can definitely see that i do see that fucking hanging heat sink on the back hot down yeah <laughs> well yeah you got to imagine like the card ends about halfway down and it's got it's sticking with that uh 30 series blow through design but man that looks like it doesn't that look like a fucking hyper 212 hanging off the end of it it kind of does yeah it's but, about as thick yeah g- given, given some of the some of the watches required man like yeah you gotta gotta, gotta generate some heat. so gotta, according to the information the 4090 is gonna have a uh, 16,384 CUDA cores 24 gigajoules of memory ram gdr6 with a tdp of 450 watts <gasps> oh yeah yeah i don't know um it, it, this is a weird time this is a weird time it, it is the even NVIDIA can shuck and jive their way out of this, because uh, before we started, if you joined us in the uh, pre-show, uh, we were looking at GPU prices, and you can genuinely, went straight to eBay, found a 3070 Ti, list of pages starting at $400, buy them now, gently used. Except for well, that one. Gently it, loved, yeah. I, <laughs> Only 24-7 mine for two months. <laughs> gentlemen, I have a lot of respect for the miner, though, don't we? Because yeah. he didn't, like, come up with a fanfic story about He's like, nope, here they he are. He didn't mention mining at all. He just put the picture, yeah. which clearly yeah. showed that it had been yeah, mining. You, but you, you, you know what this is about. <laughs> right. He's like, yes. you know how this is, man. I got five of them. You want to buy them? You want to buy them? Because, uh, yeah, Ethereum switched over to... Um, Proof Finally. of stake. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That actually happened. It's not valuable. But hey, man, I look forward to, uh, you know, we got these new video cards and I just bought the EVGA uh, 3060 a couple of months ago. Maybe I'll be able to upgrade to the EVGA 3090. Nope. Yeah. No? <laughs> <laughs> EVGA not making video cards no more, apparently. Well, I mean, you, you, can, you can get an EVGA 3090. You're not getting, you're not getting that 4090 anymore. Oh. Yeah, that's, this, this has kind of been the thing. Yeah, um, so EVGA, they're saying uh, peace out to NVIDIA. And apparently just the GPU market in general, citing that, like, you know, NVIDIA's kind of been a bunch of assholes to them. And despite selling 40% of all of NVIDIA's GPUs, they, uh, they, they don't get, like, timely things like the most up-to-date drivers or availability schedules or anything like that. I don't know, man. Uh, the, it did come as kind of a shock though didn't it like, yeah. you're like wait what who broke this uh tech jesus right yes, yes. Game, gamers, uh, nexus. gamers nexus and jay's two cents 
Okay. The, they were the ones in the original interview. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, some people could argue like, yeah, this was a chunk and, you know, EVGA, you know, of course they did the maths on this. And like, it's not really that profitable and we can afford to do it. But I, I kind of feel that there was the, uh, like that little touch, right? Yeah. You know, <laughs> of like EVGA 4000 series engineering samples. And it's the Joker in front of all the money on fire. And it's like, it's about sending a message because and, uh, NVIDIA... Like it's just known. It's it, it's a fact. Like water equals what? Nvidia is just a dick to all of its partners. Has been. They don't hide it. They, it's like what? We're on top. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Well, <laughs> and now we're, we're going to compete with you. Yes, you're our business partners, but we want to sell our video cards too. Yeah, and like it's 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 a little sad because I I when I first heard the news, I'm like, oh well, maybe maybe we'll get some EVGA AMD cards. Nope. Mm -mm. Let's see. EVGA will not carry the next generation. Uh, they will continue to do current generation. EVGA is committed to our customers. So basically, they're going to hold on to, you know, a little bit of stock for the uh, 30 series. That's one thing EVGA has been really well known for in the States is their warranty support. And if you call somebody, it's usually US based and they'll hook you up, take care of you. So I worry about them, but they said nobody's going to get laid off. So I hope that restructuring is nice and smooth for them. And yeah, I mean, when I bought the 3060, I was like, yeah, EVGA was the one company that managed before anybody else to get a 3060 within $30 of MSRP. I mean, I'm, I'm looking over here right now. My 10, my 1080 Ti is an EVGA one because for so many years, it's been like, I need a new video card. I'm just going to buy an EVGA one because they're pretty fucking solid. I, I've had no reason to, to buy good. another one. Yeah. <laughs> I typically go for Founders Edition with or MSI. EVGA was came into my life with the 30 series simply because they were the ones that uh, mm. got one out at MSRP or close, close enough to where it didn't make a difference. So yeah, they're going to be missed. Uh, they're still going to be making, uh, well, making, uh, they're going to be putting their naming on power mm -hmm. supplies and keyboards and apparently motherboards. We learned earlier this week in discord, we were like, huh? All right. Uh, addition, <laughs> additional stupid, boards. Uh, frame. That's like $1,500. Oh, baby, baby. <laughs> the, don't you dare EVGA get rid of the wiggle case. What what if, what if, what if EVGA starts like busting out some pretty sick encoder cards? That might be a fun little fuck you to Nvidia. You know, the the more I think about that, it's like I understand we were talking about that. Now here's something that EVGA did. They didn't go full scorched earth with Nvidia because they thought about it. Because if they just came out and said, "Fuck," you know, they <laughs> did the lightest <laughs> vaults to Nvidia. It's mm -hmm. like, but the rest of you are cool. We're open to doing AMD and Intel cards. Nvidia would never, ever at a principal work with them again coming out and saying we're just not doing video cards anymore leaves a pinky toe in that door man just a little bit so if they ever decide like mm, maybe we're going to come back and video is like oh oh you just told us all to fuck off so maybe we can still talk you didn't just point us out uh oh man you you, you got you got to imagine jensen's like ah so you're crawling back to daddy huh but don't you <laughs> dare Get rid of my sixteen hundred dollar wiggle case EPGA. That is, yeah, all, all that uh, that's design and engineering. Sixteen hundred dollars for a fucking frame. Fuck you. Seriously, oh, fuck you. But it, it, but God, it's ultimate it's airflow. It's and shit. Pedro, why? <laughs> you, you, Look at that. It's carbon fiber. Car yeah, carbon that nanotubes. One hundred percent profit margin. Pedro, so I hope they sell many of how them. How dare you? Do you you have no idea how fast this fucking case can go around the Nuremberg ring. <laughs> I, I want to know how fast this thing sold out, because I know I know there are people who would gladly spend 1600 bucks. There's them for, people, right? Yeah, right? They, they, they exist. They're that, out there. That money was spent immediately, but it comes in like three. Yeah, there's a $5,000 version, Jordan. Yeah, it comes with the motherboard and the graphics card that they're not so, going to be so, making so, anymore. You know, you know <laughs> Linux GameCast viewing audience, I know not everyone here shows up at Discord. If you are considering buying one of these cases you clearly hate money and may i suggest just giving it to me vga instead. do not listen to these naysayers if you want to send me one i will give you my word i will build the epic system in the wiggle case <laughs> I, 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 want, I want to see how 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 far it can like fly after being launched i just want to see if i can shove an eatx motherboard at it can can you shove a V8 in there? Like, what There's no the limiters. The, the, you, it's just a frame. Yeah, you can put whatever size but, motherboard. But I got to deal with the weight from the water cooling hanging off the side, pulling it like... <laughs> no, you, you, you got to mount it to the side of your Tesla, man. It's a way to show it off. Uh, W4. We talked about these guys. Yes. 
They are the um, consortium uh, that was started by Juan Linietsky of uh, the Godot engine to basically try and make Godot more appealing, to uh, market it, to uh, deal directly with everyone who might actually be, you know, willing to spend some money on helping develop Godot. And, well, I'd say they've been very successful because $8.5 million later... Here we go. <laughs> that's that's a lot of money. And, uh, you know, given that Juan is uh, one of the co-founders of uh, Godot and the CEO of W4, you would assume that most of this will end up for being for the developers of Godot. So, uh, yeah. I, I very much look forward to. No, no, bro. We got, we got to, we got to relocate the entire office staff to California, <laughs> San Fran. We got to, we got to, we got to like get some prime loft space. We no, got to no, pay no, for man. everyone to move out. I think you got you to gotta dig the parrot digging, bro. I mean, we need to hire like 200 staff once we get that office in Cali. And uh, no, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do global offices. Yeah. One, one in every major city. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. One in London and one in New York. And yeah. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I, Got a feels that they're not going to do that. And we're definitely aping on probably uh, somebody you've heard of or we've heard. I could definitely say, like, we, I think collectively we went, how many offices did Humble Bundle have? What? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, or even Mozilla Foundation. They're like, oh, we're going to close down the Paris office. I'm like, fucking what? You had a. <laughs> yeah. Huh? How many people did you have working for, for that? <laughs> and I understand, like, to a point, you know, I'm not one of these people's like, where you bootstrap it with six developers and like, no, no, no. But I think uh, this is good. This is important. This is, uh, you know, the public face, the business suit and bow tie for the good engine, you know, being able to go out and say, hey, we get you got somebody to blame. Blame us. Yeah, the, the commercial support, the, the Switch support, and like the console support is going to be the big thing because you can't ship those SDKs with the open source right. version of Godot. They can handle that w, for you. W, W4 is going to get you covered. So yeah, no, this, it's it's good to see that this is moving forward. And yeah, hope, hopefully like within a year or two, now, once they got some momentum under them, we're going to see like people looking at Godot rather than Unity for like their first game. We're just we really general. do need the, that change away from Unity. John mm-hmm. Rotatello. <laughs> yeah, especially with Unity going like doubling down on the ad space. Yeah, it's not gonna it's not gonna be bueno in, in the near future. This yeah. is true, Pedro. You're a big fan of uh, Wiggle controllers. <laughs> I do like the Wiggle controllers, but uh, we do need to talk about one more thing Godot related specifically. Why? No, uh, yeah, <laughs> no, 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 it's too much Godot. Fine, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's just Go, one teeny Go. tiny little bit, which is actually kind of huge in the grand scheme of things. It's Godot 4 beta. Yes, the first beta is out. Uh, you can go have a play with it uh they uh, basically it is feature freeze time so no more yeah, new features for now, 4. now in all fairness this is 4.0 beta 17 yeah <laughs> <laughs> Act, active testing man release it when it's done don't force it out right no 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 it's not the microsoft way jordan you need to go back to education game <laughs> Yeah, no, the, clearly, the, basically yeah. they've just uh, now is okay. Feature freeze, no more new features. Uh, just get what's there working properly. The big one, obviously, is Vulcan. Uh, it is, you know, what they've been uh, working for uh, since version three, and everyone went, "Where's Vulcan?" And they went, "Oh yeah, we probably should have had that." Okay, four point it is. So yeah, uh, the new physics engine. Uh, apparently, there's some revisions there. I do want to see that floppy penis render. Uh, I want that done with Godot to see what the physics look like. That's like my benchmark. <laughs> and the uh, C Sharp compiler uh, on this one uses .NET 6 rather than Mono now. Mostly. So uh, <laughs> for the most part, it is going to require its own build if you want to use .NET 6. Uh, but they are looking at pushing out a unified build later on. Um, yeah, there's, there's other cool stuff like, uh, they, they're getting closer to nailing down the lighting engine. Um, FSR, uh, 1.0 is actually going to be included with Godot 4.0 and they're saying that, uh, integration with 2.1 is planned. That's going to be nice. And we uh, talked so about GD script. Um, mm-hmm. that's going to be the business going forward. And, uh, is there anything else near this thing big? I mean, see, what, uh, what, yeah, be- my better, point better Cyrillic like, Asian font support. Uh, GD extension. We talked about Multiplayer. Oh, mm-hmm. Is there yeah. going to be a multiplayer thing I can buy for nineteen ninety nine and drop it in? No, it's 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 getting cooked in there. Uh, so they're they're saying that everything's going to be uh, working out of the box: DNS, TCP, UDP, web, web sockets. sockets oh. Get wrecked! Yay! <laughs> but but hey, 
<laughs> you, you know what? It, it's ha- having that in the engine is going to be great because, you know, all of these games coming out that only have couch co-op. We'll talk about that in a minute. Bro, um, uh, Steam Remote Play, bro. Yeah, no. Yeah, well, yeah it's, no, no. Uh, but yeah, ha- having having a good multiplayer network foundation uh, in play with 4.0 is going to be a real nice value add. Um, yeah. Okay, now can we talk about jiggly controllers? Go no, for it. Jiggle, <laughs> jiggle away, baby. Yeah, so uh, if you are uh, one of those PlayStation 5 owners or you just wanted a fancy new controller for your PC, you may have got your hands on the DualSense 5, which is not the Dual Shock 4. I'm glad I didn't knock a bunch of shit over. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, it has it has a lot of features. Uh, so A lot of them are exposed via stuff like um, Steam input, but not everything, like a bunch of the funky haptic effects that nothing except for a scant few PS5 launch titles actually used. Uh, but thanks to some custom line patches, you too can get these features exposed on Linux. You do need to set up a custom UDEV rule. All this stuff is in the uh, link. It's in our show notes. It's in the GitHub article. It looks pretty straightforward. You check out uh, Proton, you apply the three patches, uh, you add your UDEV rule, and away you go. You can get high-definition haptics. Your controller will vibrate and and pulse and do all those things that your personal massager can't and won't. (laughs) And, of course, it is still limited to those games that do support it. Otherwise, the uh, DualSense 5 is just going to emulate Rumble like it's been doing this whole time but yeah if you are playing uh death loop ghostwire tokyo uh or the final fantasy c uh 7 remake uh those even the uh steam versions if you're playing it through proton with these patches applied it works it well it, it, it still feels like rumble because that's what i'm expecting but i know in my brain that okay this is actually instead of being just the whole controller rumbling, uh-huh. it's uh, more localized. It feels like, ooh, this is coming from the front, or okay, this is here's what I gotta ask back. you though. I mean, do you think you could uh, pass a uh, blindfolded wiggle test? I think so. It is because the rumble is always just the whole controller okay. going. Do you think you could pass a high, uh, uh, blindfolded wiggle test in a live fire situation? <laughs> in, a, in a moving vehicle? <laughs> I mean, if you're but, introducing uh, more vibration to the environment, then yeah, it would probably I will be use, harder. I will be using low, <laughs> low vibration bullets. Can, 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 you, can you do it while spinning upside down on your head? <laughs> while getting hit by mortar shells <laughs> yeah. right next I, to you. I, I mean, I mean let's, listen, we, we, can, we can ease into it, right? We HD, don't have to man. do everything right away. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we got one final thing. Uh, Vikmi, the open source engine for Heroes. Vick you, might- man. Damn. No, no, fuck, no, fuck me, man. <laughs> fuck me, baby. Fuck me hard. Uh, yeah, uh, VCMI, open source engine for Heroes of Might and Magic 3. It hit 1.0. Woo! That's always good for an open source project. Oh, yeah. You know, those those point releases are nasty. As you get closer and closer, you got more and more issues that crop up. But lo and behold, um, they got a, got a couple of good features, like uh, mul- including uh, multiplayer save and resume, so anyone can save and pick up from uh, where you left off. Uh, they even have... Uh, uh, hot seat multiplayer for network people. So if you have like three people in one location and three people in another location or any sort of combination, you can do hot seat and online, which is pretty dope. Uh, gargoyles, they're immune to prosecution or they're just, they're no longer immune. Uh, they added a spectator mode uh, and a bunch of re- fixes and rebalances for stuff I don't really understand because I don't play Heroes in Mind Magic 3, but I'm sure they will anger you, loyal fan. Oh yeah, no. Uh, I had the one person uh, in my class in university that basically all he played was Heroes Three, and uh, yeah, it is possibly the best way to play Heroes Three currently because it is a modern engine that can actually play the game properly, and yeah, uh, <laughs> according to a large fan base, including that one person that I knew that they like this game a lot. Um, Heroes 3 was like the last of the true um, here Might and Magic, uh, Heroes of Might and Magic games. I personally like Dark, Dark Messiah. I do. I actually do. <laughs> hey, to be honest, I've never played any of that series, but I will say uh, you get a, like a half point because you included one screenshot in that announcement. And while those two were talking, I went to your GitHub, I scoured your web zone. <laughs> That's it. So... <laughs> I mean, there's there's not a lot going on graphically. I, I think I played one or two of Heroes of Might and Magic. Maybe I'm uh, like, if your goal is just to get in like the old timers for nostalgia, but somebody's like, I never played that. What's that look like? 
I use your imagination, Faco. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's the thing. Before we bounce out of here, I do want to thank Mark. Mark, Mark. Oh, uh, hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Oh, yes, Mark. Uh, he's a uh, a sea monster. Thank you. <laughs> what a funny story. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, doggy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome really? back to the Sharkquisition. Oh. That's, yeah, it that's took me a minute, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, welcome back. Yeah, it's a it's a pandemic fueled edition of the Sharkquisition this week, uh, where we take a look at a game, uh, run it on a bunch of different Linux distributions with some now very different hardware, and then give you a highly definitive, no holds barred rating of one to four chairs. One chair means that it's great. Four chair or four chair means that it's garbage. Four chairs means that's great. Um, yeah, uh, uh, this week we're looking at uh, pulling no punches by Brain Dead Broccoli, done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about ten bucks uh, U.S. What is it? A classic two D action arcade game, animated frame by frame. Survive a fictional pandemic in a city filled with madness and denial. We got to thank uh, Brain Dead Broccoli for sending us some keys over Curator Connect. And I guess I get to go first this yeah, time. Do. Woo! Yeah, so on Fedora 35 64 bit with the R9 or 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti, launches out of the box. Also played it on the TV box running Venn's old 8150 and the RX 580. And it holds 68 UHD on both the 1080 and 580. That's two different types of 80s. It's crazy. Uh, there is no windowed mode option, no cloud saves either. So I had to manually copy files over via SFTP, you know. Oh no. How awful. But, you know, it's still still something to bring up. I do like the hand-drawn art style. It's super cute. Everything is very expressive. And those little dudes, man, they get the shit kicked out of them. Uh, it is very Brazilian, though. Uh, the chiptune music is all right. I don't mind it. Fun-wise, yeah, I, you know what? The gimmick is super cute. I am one of these people who is frustrated by the state of the world, thanks in no small part to the pandemic and the less than stellar reaction to it. Um, so, you know, getting to beat the crap out of some people is some nice catharsis, especially when they're like completely straw man, not relate, not even remotely realistic people. Uh, anyways, um, the fighting mechanics though, they're just okay. It's competently done, but you gotta really gotta get the timing down. It's not very forgivable. You do need to really pay attention to the lanes and turning on lane indicators in the, in the options menu is kind of mandatory. Uh, if you don't want to get your butt kicked, um, they do the uh, River City Ransom thing of having you unlock your moves as you go, and Pedro's going to go in, into it a little bit more. But a lot of the standard defensive stuff, you got to go out of your way to uh, to unlock it, which is a little annoying. Uh, and it's but here's the thing: it's not like these things are out of the way; you don't have to go looking for them. But it is it is a nuisance. Uh, and I did like the face punching mini game at the end of the levels, but that stopped after like the third level, which is a little unfortunate. Here's the thing, though. It needs online multiplayer very, very badly. I was playing this with uh, my partner, Lonnie, and it's a lot more fun with two players, especially when you have someone to take the dudes off your ass uh, when you're getting corner fucked. Um, and yeah, <laughs> Ben's going to talk about it more. It is ironic, though, that a very pro pandemic action game uh, does not have online multiplayer forcing you to break quarantine if you want to play with someone if you don't have anyone you're spending the pandemic with. Uh, but, you know, it, it is it is fun for what it is. Uh, I'm going to give it three cheers. I think it's it's pretty well done. Not a lazy game. And uh, yeah, Pedro, tell me what you think. Yes. Uh, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X with the uh, Radeon RX 6700XT, it launches out of the box. It mostly holds 144 at 2560 by 1440. I saw it dip on a few of the levels. Then again, I was playing it on minimal, which is the hardest difficulty. So there's more enemies and there's less... Uh, um, health and uh, one-up pickups. The uh, it's the the hand sanitizer, which is the HP, and the masks, which are the one-ups. Very well done. Very well done. Uh, so yeah, I saw that game over screen a few times too. But the Dual Shock, it worked. Uh, I did have to go into the the options to change it to shapes for it to have the correct glyphs, but the option is there, so very nice. Uh, it's very gruesome hand-drawn animation, but I like it. I like it very much, especially after the church level. Uh, that, that goes places. The The music, admittedly, after a while, it started to grate. I was not a fan. As for the fun, well, um, 
punhos de repúdio, as, uh, or uh, fists of disavowment, if you want to do the literal translation, uh, is uh, as it was originally called. Uh, and, you know, it took some Googling to actually figure it out because when I Google, it's like, okay, pulling no punches. Uh, who develops? Uh, no. But n no. Okay, what's the name of the game? The actual name of the game. Oh, it's on itch and it's called Pungs de Repudio. Okay, right on. Let's go with that. Uh, but yeah, if the prominent flags and the general green, yellow, and blue set dressing doesn't make it entirely obvious, it's made in Brazil. Uh, it's rare that we get to see some, like, a very competently done game come out of Brazil, though not as rare as it is to see one coming out of Portugal. But yeah, uh, in the wake of the turtles, this is not bad at all. Uh, it is, except for the half chip tune music, that shit can die in a fire. Um, not being able to dodge reliably or do a back attack until you've unlocked the third and fifth moves, uh, respectively. It that did seem like a bit of a dick move. Jordan mentioned it's like, okay, that those seem like basic moves that you should have unlocked. From the get-go, not asking the player to unlock as they go. But I didn't hate it. I, I did not hate it. It is as a, a typical uh, beat-em-up, a turtle-style, uh, Streets of Rage style. I did not hate it. Three chairs. There we go. All right, hang on. I got to get all my things. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yes. <laughs> okay, hang on. It's been a while, man. We haven't done one of these in three weeks. I'm out of practice. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, over here on Now Debian Testing, because I wanted the new hotness and the new craziness, uh, double complete mouse cursors right out of the box, man. I had like two hands moving around. It's kind of weird. Now, as Jordan pointed out, there's no options for Windows or full screen, no options for resolution settings. Here's your pro tip. You want people to stream that? You need that. Uh, graphical options are lighting quality, bloom sliders. No option to disable VSync, which is also a problem, especially with Unity titles under Linux, because sometimes 60 can be a little jerky, especially with the background movement. A couple of sliders for volume levels, and as you might have guessed, the 3060 didn't have any issues running this on YOLO at 60 FPS. Now, in pull no punches, you have the punches, you have the kicks, along with the assorted throwables and whackables. Didn't like the drop kick being uh, triggered by the punch button. I mean, that wasn't a complete showstopper. But it's it's a standard lot for your brawler baddies uh, that you got to fight. Uh, blocking does prevent you from taking damage. I noticed that because that kind of tosses the need for crowd control out the window if you're patient enough to wait for proper baddie alignment. Animation, fluid enough for a brawler. Soundtrack, as I think everyone said, it's kind of forgettable. It's there if you like it. I got all the way to the Baxter Stockman with a golden AK. Brazil, man. Uh, and... On the you just get killed to death screen, it had a pro tip of like, by the way, if you get killed to death, might want to cut on the lane indicators. That would have been helpful but before I died. Uh, it wanted to start me all the way back at the beginning of level two. And I said, yeah, I mean, you know what? I'm good. So I got like a 50 minutes in it on single player. And that's about how long old man Vin can deal with 2D arcade brawler before things just get repetitive for me. Sorry, not sorry on that. You know, I've been playing this game TM for the last 30 years. It's nothing to do with pull no punches. I mean, I had the same response to the latest turtle game, uh, Streets of Rage, Charlie Myrtle, Murder, etc. You know, that's how long it takes me to learn the mechanics before I squat up. I'm like, all right, hey, let's get together and play these things. That's when they become fun. And that, that's where pull no punches just falls flat on its face. Because it's local couch co-op only. Even if you want to play this with your mate in the next room, you guys are like, nope, come in here. We're going to play on one monitor. We're going to go play in the living room however you want to do that which uh you know what people shouldn't be doing during a fuck mothering pandemic meeting up in groups to play games did we learn nothing over the last three years game development companies uh <laughs> indie developers at all you need to have online multiplayer built in and no despite what steam's trying to sell you remote play is a pile of nope it might work locally in the same house but forget about it and, you know, this game, like, I don't know why the irony is so thick with this, but like, unless it's some 3D chess shit, like this game incentivizes people to not self-quarantine during a pandemic by not having online multiplayer. There it is. It's your bog standard. You know, I liked it. A lot of work went into it, but that messaging, 
you fucked up the end game on this, gentlemen. I want to say two chairs. It technically works. I would have liked to have played it. Uh, Jordan, you pointed out that multiplayer is good. Yeah, multiplayer is uh, is pretty fun. Um, the 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 levels definitely become a lot easier as well because I don't think they have much in the way of uh, multiplayer balancing. But like, unlike Turtles, there's not really much in the way of character blindness. Like, all the characters are like different enough that you can tell them apart in a pretty cluster fucked cl- crowd. Especially with the outlines. Monsters. That's the big thing yeah. with the Turtles. Uh, yeah. It's like they all have the same outline, so it's like you're looking for the colors. This, all the characters are shaped differently. Oh man, I, I remember this level though. I unlocked the forward throw, and I was just lock. I was just knock people off the elevator. It was super yeah. satisfying. <laughs> oh Good man, stuff. I've been having bad feels for elevators from Streets of Rage. We spent oh, way yeah, too yeah. long on that. Oh yeah, I, there, there, <laughs> there was something like that. All right, well, uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think that's gonna do it for the requisition. Coming up next, uh, get your bagpipes out. We're blowing some sheep's gut for Intel. I'm back. Uh, I mean, we're back. Well, what? I mean, Jordan and Ven never really left. Back I did. like scoliosis. <laughs> they won't and, uh, let me I leave. Did he- I did hear the all the replies about uh, my leaving, and uh, especially last week's. And no, I don't go around rubbing my Steam Deck on other people's faces on the show much. Uh, IRL, I kind of did that. <laughs> <laughs> His brother, his brother, man, his, his mom, his dad, they're just like, get the fuck out of here with your rubbing your console. Yeah, my little brother, uh, of course, it's like, okay, you can play. As long as I'm here, you can play with the Steam Deck and Nori's sister, the exact same thing. And Nori's sister's boyfriend actually played a little bit of Elden Ring on my Steam Deck. So, yeah. Uh, Did you tell it, him what a scrub he was? Did you tell him to get good? <laughs> No, <laughs> you should have. It's a missed I, I, opportunity. I'm, I'm one of yeah. I'm not a very good Elden Ring player because you know that I don't go around telling people to get good. <laughs> that, that's unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a personal problem. What do you think the most uh, played game on your deck was out of everyone? Because uh, Vampire had... Survivors. Really? Yes, uh-huh. <laughs> I played a lot of it. Uh, my little brother played all of it. I, I guess um, it's really good on the battery. Yes, right? yes, it is. <laughs> Lock the screen to 30 FPS, away you go. <laughs> Every time I watch somebody play, play Vampire Survivors, you know, I do watch it with genuine curiosity, because it's like, whatever mechanic that triggers in the people who get hooked on that, I'm just null and void. Immediate reward. It, it, it's the easiest way to get that dopamine hit. Yeah. <laughs> so how, how, how's I it run drugs on a- like a normal person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, if you want to get in touch with us, head over to LinuxGameCast.com. we got a contact button smash it fam uh you know a couple of rules developers publishers we get a steam curator page if you want to just send us some keys that way uh, if you want to be on the show we'd love to have you if you're working on a game open source project you name it crowdfunding campaign and just make sure you get a linux build warning if you're going to send us uh, an entire press release with a bunch of links and shit like that there's the email address at the end of that sentence and uh we expect you to be able to figure it out as always leave us a comment on patreon or leave us a comment on the youtube video or, uh, yeah, that's about it. Odyssey, Odyssey or Library, we got a channel there. So if you want to do that, that's down. Trying to leave a comment by at replying me on Twitter's never worked in the entire history of ever. So use it your own. Uh, Send us a voicemail. Voicemail. Okay, yes. Spotify voicemails. <laughs> if you're on Anchor or Spotify, which we have a video version on Spotify and we've had it for a while, uh, which is always fun. I had somebody ask me, like, why does that one come out so early? It's like, because there's a 50-50 chance of that working. <laughs> and it just fucking off and not processing the video so i have to resubmit it that's why sometimes it's early sometimes it's on time and uh yeah we'd love to play it if you want to jump through all the hoops apparently that need to be done we need we need a higher sample size we've had one person call in and said this was a pain in the ass so let us know let us know so go through that pain in the ass did anybody else um i know strider's a huge fan of the guy uh who does uh the uh, moore's laws is dead right Yes. Moore's Law is not dead, one or the other? Uh, yeah, sure. He, he, one of those, yes. Yeah, Moore's Law. Rosencrantz and Gilded Stern. Something Stern dead. <laughs> they're, they're like BFFs. He's been talking about the guy all week, which is entertaining. <laughs> and um, he, he's he been doing the, you know, it's rumors. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, it's the gossip rag of the YouTube thing. It's the rumor mill thing. Uh, who did it before I mean, that? Uh, what was his name? Adore TV. Yeah. That was the other source. And you watch that shit for the same reason that you pick up one of those uh, rag mags, man. And you're like, okay, this is like, whatever. Like, you have some fun with it. 
they, we, and we talked about it a little bit. Yeah, it's like sure. fanfic stuff. Of course, you got to bring it up because you never know because some things actually happen. He uh, he was the one that has been hard on like Intel's canceled. It's dead. It's not going to happen. And earlier this week, I was watching. I think it was a hot hardware. Old Tom P showed up, and he's like, "I can tell you with absolute because they pinned him down." I was like, "Good on you, absolute certainty that Battle Mage is probably not going to get canceled." <laughs> Which is, I think, <laughs> yeah. Which, which is what, which is what uh, Moore's Law not dead or Moore's Law is dead. Whatever. More Schrodinger's Moore's Law. Uh, we're, we'll call him that. Uh, yeah, uh, that's what he said. That uh, they're, it's going to keep going for Battle Mage, but uh, Druid not, and Celestial would not be exactly up, because what I was getting to is my enjoyment this week was watching again. I had to see. I was like, "What is your response to Intel?" Basically, I'm like, "No, nah, shuts. It's coming out." Watching the backtracking, man. He's like. Because anytime I see a video, it's like, well, if you go back and pay attention to exactly how I said it, I'm like, hey, man, just be like, no, yeah, fuck no. off, right? Like, <laughs> All right, my bad. Uh, yeah, just come up and be like, this is a rumor site. Uh, but P ear. Pear? No, nope, it's P. <laughs> this, is, this is their name, P, intentional space, ear. Is it maybe it's ER? You don't know. Writes about the Intel Triple X. Pedro, you take it away. All right, Intel desktop GPU seems is pretty much dead, uh, unfortunately. Moore's Law is dead, just reported it in a short vid. Mm-hmm. Dot, dot, order just came down from upper management. Uh-huh. Uh, although it's still rumor level, but seems most likely true. B- big if true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, first of all, I don't believe quite any anyone, except maybe Nori, as much as this person believes Moore's Law is dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I mean, like it's 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 like we've been saying is no no one's gonna know for realsies until Intel fucking comes out and says yeah here's here's the uh, here's the launch date for Celestial or yeah no we're we are no longer pursuing this uh, this uh, endeavor outside of Battle Mage but yeah like until until then it's all fucking speculation it's spin the wheel of booga booga and read the I mean it Dragon absolutely Bones. is and you know what speculation gossip rumor shit is fun and I think with any other company outside of intel like none of this shit would even fall into the plausible area with intel all of this shit falls under plausible um they interviewed raja raja kaduri and they asked him it's like okay these rumors that are going around that say that that it's canceled it's like i have no idea where those started it's not canceled it's like, okay <laughs> and it, i mean i mean to strider's point yeah there's arc gpus in stores but there's those, a the, arc gpu which is out of the stock A3, everywhere the, which the, makes the, you the, three wonder how many did they actually put in circulation yeah so immediately out of stock for a gpu that doesn't even compete with a I, nine-year-old nvidia card and i mean the question was always about the later generations anyways we we knew right. that the engineering samples existed we, we've seen them we've seen the, the the numbers for them yes clearly clearly they exist intel's not just gonna throw them all out Hey, um, then we get back might. to yeah. Then we got to come back to like Intel being Intel. Um, yeah, it, it, and, and, and they this have is, this done is GPUs why the rumor in the mil- past, and they threw them out effectively. <laughs> and, and this and this is why the rumor bill is so spicy. And I think all this roots from the fact that like we just want we don't we don't want to live in uncertainty anymore. We want to know is there going to be like a future for Intel graphics? Can we like hope for a good one in the future? Because you know AMD was shitting the bed for their graphics for a good for a long time, and then they fixed their shit. So yeah, it takes time to get things right, and we don't know what the future holds. So yeah, I mean, it, we've been over to getting it. It's a silicon doesn't age well at all, and you know, best case scenario, even according to Intel, like their top in what is it seven eighty. Seven seventy is the top end. Uh, best case scenario, that's going to compete with a three coming up on four year old thirty seventy. When Intel, is, when Nvidia is about to release a new series, and you can, as we did in the beginning of the show or before we started recording proper, go to eBay. We can get a thirty seventy four. Forty bucks, about four hundred ish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's definitely going to be rough for Intel if they stay the course, but you know I hope they do. Really, they need to, and I think that's why we're all so interested in it because we desperately need somebody yeah. even to disrupt. Everyone the wants a player bit. three. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we we are we are not praying for Intel's failure here. Like, yeah, far and from. And yeah, to synthetic L's point, uh, that's one thing that did irk me. Yeah, he Rajat has not come out and publicly said it's not canceled verbatim. He's not used those words. 
He said he didn't know where the rumor come from because if it is canceled, he didn't know anything about it. Which again, <laughs> Which again goes to back Intel. to Intel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not telling their engineering teams diddly shit until the last minute. Um, uh, I, everyone, um, you know, say a little prayer to the flying spaghetti monster tonight, and we hopefully we get something at Intel because we desperately need it. Um, there. there, there's your that AV one moment. dedicated AV one encoder. Everyone wants one of them too, <laughs> right? I, I'd buy one of those just for that. On that feel good um, bombshell. Yeah. Hey, we're going to cue the music. If you want to get in touch with me, I'm at Vin Stone on Twitter. I'm doing the things there uh, at Vin on our federated timeline. If you're into that, mass.linuxemcast.com. And uh, yeah, just chilling out. You can have reply to me in IRC, IRC link to Discord if you're a patron or if you're a Twitch sub. I'm in Discord all the time. Just talking shit with these Yahoo's and everybody hooks in there. Forever and ever, you'll stay in my heart, and I will love you. I'm Jordan. You can find me on Twitter at Burning Fool, twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. You're here. There's nothing I fear. Uh, You're not a beer. And I'm going to drop it right there. <laughs> say a little <laughs> prefer you. Yes. Um, find me on Twitter at Unaccounted4. Uh, I, I swear no quoting or misquoting of lyrics, as the case may be. Often. Hey, I saw a great starter pack for that screen name that I want. Uh, starter pack on the wide. It was like count not used in like seven years. It was like one. <laughs> yeah. 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 I thought of Pedro. Anyway, here's some credits. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Thank you. There's quite a it few had of them. A handle. <laughs> It was right? it was the first portable Nintendo. Well, it wasn't the first portable Nintendo console. Oh. So that's a, that is a fucking lie. The Game Boy would like a word with you. The the Game and Watch would like a word with you. The sir. Game Watch, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we gotta we gotta thank our advisors. We gotta thank Omegas. We gotta thank Artharon. We gotta thank our executive producers. Who are they? It's oh, it's a dragon. Dracarys. <laughs> it's Barbara, it's dragon. Space show. dragon, man. It's the seventies all over Mike again. G, Mike T. Drummer. Kohaku. George Pebble. Tomas Unoid. Our Chicago kicks ass here. Abstract. Action. And we got the Death Notes or Sea Monsters. The uh, Sea Monsters, Renault, Rider X, Machina, Trudgy, Vertanuta, Justin, Frostclaw, Nathan, we got a, we got David, Olaf on there too, don't System we? T. Uh, yes. Olaf yes. Hope. Yes, sea we monster. do. <laughs> He's a Sea Monster. Yep. Actually, Mark is Death a Note, Sea I Monster. Think. Wait, Sea Monster? <laughs> no, Death Note. Death Note. Was it Death Note? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, okay. Whatever. I was like, wait a minute. I Aren't thought the I Sea Monsters three fifty. Yes, I think they uh, Olaf Hope's Death Note. Okay, okay, sure. Well, thank you all the Sherlings, too. Like Jason B., Lord Bucker, AJ, Das Geek, Brock, Giovanni, John, uh, Gronkalonk, uh, Paulo P., Gronk, Greg L., Mr. Amish, Dorner Geek, Colin N., Meg, Massivoni, Dementor, Ugiwan, Fellatio. All the fun and upstanding cannibals. Thank you so much. But most importantly, just get out there, do something else with Linux, and try not to die in a fire. Unless you do. Make sure you're recording. Live stream that. <laughs> Dracarus, motherfucker. Dracarus, bitches. Bye. Five dudes. <laughs>